everybody, it's Dr. Friels again here. We are with a young lady who is a type two diabetic and unfortunately she has undergone an amputation um, of the toe. When is the last time you saw a podiatrist? It's okay, they're not. We're more than six months ago. More than six months ago. So um, unfortunately we're to the point where we've got some blood blisters, we've got a lot of callusing, so we're gonna get everything cleaned up, we're gonna drain the um, blood blister, she has fantastic circulation, so I'm not really concerned about you healing the wound. Um, of course, being a diabetic, that you are immunocompromised, so we've got to watch these very closely. Um, but we want to get all the drainage out, and then, of course, I told you about the um, iodine to use that, um, and that's how we're going to treat the wound. So we'll walk through it together if you want to kind of take a peek. I already started trimming this callus here. It's quite thick. You can see this cap here um, was trimmed off first, and we've already discussed um, how we can prevent this in the future. One of the things that we're going to do is a minimally invasive surgical procedure that we do here, which is basically clipping the toe underneath. If you want more information about that, you can watch, that's hard right there, you can watch our video um, that we already have on YouTube and Facebook. Um, it's called a hammer toe release or correction or something. Um, it's a really good video and a step-by-step -step process and how that is. So as you can see, hers is reducible. These are little guys, like it's like pear in a rock. These are hard. And she can't feel a thing, which is good. And sometimes when they're this hard, what we can do is um, put a little saline on there and get the tissue nice and soft if we need to. So there's probably going to be some areas I may have to do that too. But let me see. There we go. And you just wear a regular tennis shoe? Right. You know, often when we do an amputation, um, we will do a toe fill, which is basically an insert, and do this part, fill this part of the toe. So the foot still feels that that part of the toe is there because what's happening is she's getting these hammer toes because of um, the toes around it is compensating. Plus you have, we talked about your higher arch. Oh my Wish you guys knew this is really tough skin. <laughs> so it's only been six months. So this tells me you need to be seen monthly to trim these calluses. But again, the goal of doing the procedure is to hopefully prevent it from building up. And if you do get a slight buildup, then it's gonna be not as severe. Do you have any questions for me while we're kind of whittling away here? This is gonna take a few minutes. No, pretty good to go. I oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Looking much better. And you can see all these little um, spots here. It's actually dried blood from pressure. And so that's how calluses form. The pressure um, in whatever area, if it's on the bottom of your foot, if it's on the tip of your toe from hammer toes, creates bleeding underneath the skin. So a lot of people, when they see this, are like, is that a wart? What is that? That's actually bleeding from the pressure. So we know we really need to get the pressure off of there. Okay, so tip, trim over here on this toe. I'll just kind of move this way. There we go. Good view. All right. Get all this off. Now you're a type two diabetic. Yes. You're you're quite young. Mm -hmm. How did you end up being a type two at such a young age? Just well, yeah. Um, I had extremely high triglycerides. Okay. They would be like fifty six hundred. Oh my so god. I it got to where I was having to be put in the hospital like twice a month with pancreatitis and um, wow. once I got the pancreatitis the first time mm -hmm. then I become a diabetic. Gotcha. And last year I had um, I had <laughs> weight loss surgery. You look great. Do you so, want a handle? Huh? Do you want a blade handle? I might want a blade handle. Okay. I'm not gonna lie, my, my hand's starting to cramp up a little bit. Okay, so we're back. Got a nice blade handle. Take some pressure off of the tip of my finger. 
Um, we were just discussing, uh, before we started filming, I was checking her range of motion, and she actually has something called equinus, or equine, like a horse. When I tell people, especially in Kentucky, I'm like, you walk like a horse. Everyone gets it around here. You know, the point is you're putting too much pressure to the ball of your foot, and as you can see, these toes are just developing all these callusing uh, formations because of all the shift of the weight there. This one's actually gonna open up a little bit next to our, this little blood blister here. Right in there. The good news is we're catching it before it's too uh, deep. And so we can get all this cleaned up because any of this dead skin will uh, break underneath. Once that skin breaks, you get that hard callus over top and then it ulcerates. And then that's when we run into problems. That ulcer will Let's see here, this is just, it's soft. The ulcer, of course, can get infected. And then um, the bone can get infected. And then you wind up with half a tap. And then you wind up with half a tap. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're good spirits about it. I'm sure at the time it was pretty traumatic. No, I asked. I had asked and asked and asked. And couldn't get anything done and I, I finally just asked my primary care doctor because I happened to be in the hospital at the time and I was just like can you see what's going on with my toe right and he took me down for an x-ray and came back and told me what it was and I was just like take the whole thing right you don't she had an osteomyelitis which is a bone infection I'm really happy to report everybody that after um, taking this blood blister the cap off that the skin underneath is very healthy it looks good also we already discussed um, your good blood flow so that's so important to heal something like this I will tell any students or residents that are watching if you or potential patients if you go to trim and do some own surgery on your own at home and you do not have blood flow you are creating many many more problems you never want to do that because you um, are making the wound bigger. You're not helping it. So don't get any blades out at home. If you don't have good blood flow, look here, look at that skin. That's good. Look at that, let's just get all the gunk off. Yeah, much better. I'm really looking at this part right here. See that? Make sure that's not getting into the, the next layer of skin. And the toes are kind of hard to trim because they're so small. You know, and you gotta kind of take your time, whittle around it. You don't wanna make any big slices, even though this callus is godly, probably feel like an inch thick. <laughs> but, I mean, look at the tray here. Look at everything we've gotten so far. Okay, that looks good. Got this one little piece. I'm a perfectionist, so it, uh, I want everything to be just right. Okay, let's look at the bottom here. Let me touch up just a little bit. Let's save the back a little bit. We've got a little bit, not bad. I'm probably gonna have you grab me another blade before we move on to the next foot. Sure. So um, we were discussing uh, before we started filming that one of the big things we want to do like i said is stretch every day she's going to spend about 15 to 20 minutes and we have a link on our website for those of you at home that want to start stretching because we absolutely have to get the pressure off of the ball of the foot that's why you see a lot of people that have ulcers in this particular area here this is underneath the big toe joint all right i'm gonna let you grab that blade for me yep. i'll take the other foot now Okay, where do we want to start? Let's start right here. <laughs> so she's gonna be using stretching splints or a night splint every day. Ideally wear as much as you can. Some people sleep in them. Others wear them whenever they're sitting down watching TV for a few hours, but the more you wear it, the better. What that's gonna do is 
give you a constant stretch on the Achilles tendon to help alleviate some of the uh, pressure here. Um, when I was doing a lot of foot surgery for wound care when I was in Atlanta, uh, we always did a release of the Achilles tendon to get the pressure off of the ball of the foot. That's how common it is to get pressure um, in these areas and to also have a tight heel cord. So that's essential in kind of changing the mechanics of how the foot functions to get the weight off of it. Okay. You don't go barefoot, do you? Okay, thank God. Okay, so not only are we gonna do that to really kind of change her gait and get her more heel to toe, we are also going to do a mold of her foot today to make a custom orthotic. And what I'm gonna do is offload these areas that are pressure points. Sorry, Aylin. It's okay. Get out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we forgot. We got this callus over here too. So make sure you document that. I didn't tell you about that one. Okay. It's a surprise callus. Okay, so this is the sub-fifth metatarsal head. So you kind of function as a tripod. You put a lot of uh, pressure and weight to your heel, of course, and then this head of the bone, and then this head of the bone. So what I'm gonna do is just some rebalancing with your orthotics so you use all five uh, metatarsal bones evenly. Well, I'm definitely getting my workout today here. <laughs> so if anybody has any questions about their family, friends, or themselves, like um, in regards to diabetes, callusing, blood blisters, you name it, just drop a comment. Um, this is this little guy's hard to get to. And I'm happy to respond back. If you guys want to see any videos, just let me know. We, we do this stuff all day long, so it's just this kind of our normal day. But if you like it and you, you want to see more, just let us know what you want to see. Also, don't forget to sign up for our channel so you get alerts every time we get to whittle away or see something neat. We have a uh, hookworm video. <laughs> yeah. Um, this patient had gone to, oh gosh, what was it, St. Lucia or, or some island, some, you know, island in the Caribbean, and had been playing a lot of volleyball on the beach, and barefoot, of course, I mean, who goes to the beach and wears shoes, um, and a hookworm had gotten in his foot by the time I got him. Ooh, it was bad. It was tunneling everywhere. So that's a pretty neat video for you guys to watch if you like this stuff. Also, we have another one. Um, with gout that was just oozing all these crystals and it was uh, it was pretty neat it's kind of actually how all this got started okay skin you can see I mean we pro I don't even know how much dead skin we've got down here I probably a good wood maker <laughs> yeah. You have to go so slow because you don't want to slip and cut the toe next to it because everything's so close. We're getting there though. So like I said, you're going to put um, some betadine or iodine, whatever you've got at home. It's just, a, it's available everywhere. And you're going to put it painted on the um, area where the blood blisters are and then cover it with some gauze um, every day. And you're going to come back in two weeks so we can kind of take a peek to um, make sure everything's healed. I think you're going to be just fine, but you will uh, please call us with any concerns in the meantime. Mm -hmm. And just to let you know, also diabetics have first priority coming in. We have four providers here. Someone can get you in same day for any concerns for signs of infection, such as redness, drainage. What's going on here? Here we go. Something, a little pressure. That just came out, didn't it? Mm. There we go. Okay, so you're getting some, what appears to be, I don't know if this is 
almost looks like some purulent drainage, but there's no odor. This is typically a sign of infection. Let's get in here a little, little more. Whatever's in there, we want it to come out because the last thing you want that to do is sit in there. Fluid continue to damage the skin underneath the blister. Yeah, this is just dead stuff. Let's check out this a little more here. Okay, everything's cleaning up. Looking good, looking good. Just a little old fluid. You've got a small wound on the tip of this area, but not bad at all. Okay. Do this little top right here, and I think we're pretty much done. So let's do some beta down here and then over here. Much better. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching um, another episode of a two drainage of blood blisters. And I don't even know how many calluses. I've completely lost count. Um, everything's been cleaned up and she is ready to go. We're just going to get her wrapped up and get her out of here. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.